Good evening and a warm welcome here to our next webinar at the JFD Bank. Today was the topic uh, mean reversion trading strategies or strategy. Ah, anyhow, um, my name Stefan Friedrichowski as always for those kind of webinars and a warm welcome in my name as well. Yeah, today is the 18th of April 2019 and it's a pleasure for me to have you all here. I see, I think, some new names as well. Um, wherever you are, um, it's good to have you here within that webinar. You see already our title, Mean Reversion Trading Strategy. So, yeah, that's really a base or even basic strategy we want to discuss today. And it's even a little bit more than just discussing the basic principle uh, principles of strategy. Um, as always for, for my webinars, I not only want to give you some hints of how to trade and um, give you a complete and uh, ready to trade uh, recipe what to do, especially today it's much more because um, I want to show you how to develop something like that and how to ask steps even before you open the first trade. Uh, that means, do we have a statistical edge? Do we have a probability advantage if we do what we are doing or intend to do? And so it's it's much more than just to say, okay, if that, then open trade, um, take profit, stop loss. And no, it's uh, uh, much more behind the story, that kind of story. And I want to introduce those kind of concepts as well. And uh, that you can learn a little bit of how I personally develop trading strategies and finally um, yeah, come to conclusions about special uh, strategies itself. As you see, oh no, I forgot something. Sorry for that. Uh, I forgot even to uh, to give you already access to my slides. Um, sorry for that. I will do it as we speak here uh, because uh, you should have those slides if you like. And uh, finally, what I can uh, um, tell you already later, we will have uh, some additional Excel sheets. And um, if you have interest in those, uh, just send me a note. Unfortunately, those I cannot uh, upload here directly. Uh, therefore, I can only um, go via email. So you see my email address already here, s.friedrichowski, it's a really complicated last name, at jfdbank.com. Uh, but anyhow, if you just send uh, an email uh, to support uh, at jfdbank.com, it will finally reach me. Definitely, and I will make sure that you get uh, the slides or uh, the Excel sheets later shown. Okay, um, you know that I have always uh, to show once uh, during a webinar that kind of um, um, slide. Or with disclaimer, because we are talking about trading strategies and later you may adapt those ideas, but of course, finally, whatever you do, you do it on your own responsibility. I think that's self-explaining and you understand uh, that I have to mention that as well. Okay, having done that, let's go to the topics of today. First of all, of course, I have to talk about the basic principles of mean reversion. It's it's really a mighty tool um, for, for any trading activities. And even if we later talk about full automatic trading possibilities with that kind of approach, you can use what you learn, what you will learn here, even for discretionary trading, trading directly out of the chart, because you can use exactly the same logic um, direct and um, I'm quite sure that you will have some good trades with that uh, basic logic about mean reversion. You will learn a little bit about what we talk that we talk about fair prices, fair values, and how to use them. But uh, let's go for that later. But if you have such an idea of of uh, that we, we go for mean reversion, which is more or less going back to a fair value. If you have such an idea for any trading strategy or trading approach, 
the first thing you need to do is you need a proof that you generate with that kind of approach what's called an edge or uh, in other words a probability advantage i think edge uh, stems from poker but i'm not, not really sure but um, so probability advantage may be another word for that so we have to be sure that this, this kind of approach that kind of entry signal really generates an edge and because only if you have such uh, such an edge, such a probability advantage, it's worth to go further into uh, the complete uh, setup of that kind of strategy. Without that, we are lost because then you, we don't have to go further. Then I will show you up uh, a strategy going with mean reversion even without stop loss and you think, oops, Stefan goes without stop loss. Normally, he's always telling us we need a stop loss. Uh, yes, the story is right. Um, sometimes I have a few exceptions out of that rule, and I can explain why I have those exceptions. One, for example, is um, if we are talking about trading stocks. Okay, I know that uh, beyond zero, no stocks can fall down. So, yeah. I know exactly what I'm doing, then uh, that is an example of uh, having no stop loss. Or at least if we don't have huge trades, so uh, and we have what we later will um, introduce, time stops, meaning that our trade has definitely an end, and that will be either um, end of the day or end of the week. So that gives a limit as well. And Finally, what we are doing is, of course, we will look for a complete scenario, complete portfolio of um, Forex pairs, as well as, I think, finally, we have some indices as well um, in the loop. And yeah, so uh, that you will see as a complete portfolio. So, but let's start with the, the very beginning of mean reversion. Um, because that is already quite quite important uh, to to understand, and um, the basic assumption of mean reversion strategies is that there is something what we will call a fair value for a given underlying, whatever that underlying is, and to have that kind of fair value for a given underlying um, is yeah is a basic idea. Then the actual price, if you look to the chart, might deviate from that fair value. And since I call it already fair values, you, you imagine already the idea. If we have huge deviations compared to that fair value, then the natural tendency is that the price goes back to exactly that fair value. So whenever we have those kind of exaggeration, so if we if we are far from that fair value, we have the idea the, the, the price goes back exactly to that value. And that's all. That's the basic idea of mean reversion. But obviously there's a <laughs> big question mark, um, and that is what is a fair value? So how can we define a fair value for any given underlying um, for example if i talk about ducks yeah ducks might be at uh, 12000 points and for whatever reason i call 11000 the fair value what we would do then is obvious we would open a short trade into the direction of the fair value and if the actual price would be 10000 and the fair value is 11 then we would open a long trade that's easy but how to define a fair value and um, let's be practical here. Let's be pragmatic. We just de define something as being the fair value. And one example or one possibility is we just go for an EMA within our chart and we call the EMA value the fair value. Why not? So I don't have um, a real logical definition or um, um, or something like I can tell you, yeah, that's the reason why you have to calculate the fair value exactly that way. No, we just call the EMA the fair value. And then, 
of course, we will do the next step. And that is looking whether that has a probability edge, uh, probability advantage, so a so-called edge. And if so, yeah, then don't care about the real definition, what is really fair. Other possibilities might be to use regression lines within the chart and uh, or you take values even from higher time frames. Maybe uh, close of last week, that is a fair value for the next week, whatever. Everything is possible. To illustrate that basic idea a little bit more, let's go for a chart uh, first time here. Um, I have to mention that I have done a similar webinar, well, not really similar, but, but at least it was titled Mean Reversion uh, almost two years ago, and that's uh, where I took that picture here, um, but uh, it's still valid, so uh, I go exactly for the same picture. And what you see here is a chart, a standard chart, in this case it's M15, later we will use H1 or even uh, M5 data, but it doesn't matter for the principle of that kind of strategy. We have the chart, we have the candles, we have an EMA value, uh, an EMA line within that. Uh, maybe that was uh, 50 EMA, I don't, I don't know exactly. But let's go exactly in the middle. As so you see already, everything you need to know about that strategy, about the principle. Um, here, of course, we have huge deviation from that EMA. And if we see here that huge deviation and we follow that logic, we open a trade into the direction of the fair value, and the fair value is the red line, then we would open a short trade. And yeah, doesn't look that bad. Another example here, doesn't look that bad. Even on the other side. So now we are on the south side of the fair value. Opening a long trade here doesn't look that bad. You find typical examples. But I have always to mention uh, if a speaker about trading idea uses a chart, of course, he will confirm his idea within the chart. Uh, that's how to select the appropriate uh, chart segment, as always. But we will do a statistical analysis of that, and if we can prove it there, uh, then it's much better than just to have a single chart uh, which confirms that basic idea. But that's how we go. We have to talk about some details. What could be the take profit level? Will it be the moving EMA value, or should we fix it? Do we use a stop loss? Hmm. All those things we have to define. But one step after the other. Now, the trading setup itself is therefore quite easy. The trading setup just has an EMA period. So we use an EMA, and that EMA needs a period. Um, and in principle, that is a degree of freedom, or that's more the mathematical uh, wording, or we just call it a parameter. So we, we, we can turn that knob. Uh, so the EMA period. Then, we just measure something, and what we measure is the distance. Uh, I should call it uh, better, not here already is threshold, it should be called distance. What we, um, what we measure is the distance between, oops, the distance between um, the EMA and the actual price. What we are doing here is we, we simply sub subtract a close price minus EMA value uh, and take the absolute of that so that we have a real distance. And in order to have it on a percentage level, we divide that by the close price. So then we have, a, let's call it a universal distance in percent. And yeah, later we will ask whether that distance is exceeding um, a certain threshold, and that might trigger a trade. Okay, got it. So, second degree of freedom now. First, EMA period. Second, that threshold. We need to define that. Let's see. We might have a third one, which is just a stop loss in percent. Uh, maybe 1%, 0.5%, whatever number. So, already... That kind of description is quite good because we only have three 
degrees of freedom even if we include a stop loss. If we don't use a stop loss, we would even only have two. That's cool. Okay, so the trade is opened if the threshold is exceeded uh, by the close price. So we, we look for the close of the, a, a given candle, we compare to the EMA, and if that distance is far enough, then we open the trade. Perfect. Opening, well defined. When is the trade closed? Okay, um, if you reach a stop loss, if we apply a stop loss, then of course the trade is closed. But we um, can define a take profit. So uh, one idea would be we'll go for the EMA value at the open of our trade. Later you will see that we have two possibilities. So we can go for that, that we, we, we uh, write down the EMA value at the open of our trade, or we just take the EMA as it is. So the, sometimes then our tech profit will come closer to us naturally because uh, EMA is following uh, always the price with a certain lag. So whenever we cross either the one or the other, both are valid uh, variants of that kind of strategy, um, then we close the trade and we say we have reached our take profit level. So that's everything we have to do in order to define that kind of strategy. I want to use an additional stop, which I always call time stop. And that is just the end of the day or the end of the week. There's a specific reason for doing uh, uh, something like that. The end of the day actually would be even a little one hour earlier. Um, you may know that uh, that 11 p.m. Um, then always the so-called swap swap costs are accumulated and um, are charged to your trade. So the financing costs uh, are charged to your trade. We can avoid that if you close the trade before. Um, and the other thing, going for example for end of the week, that would avoid any gap which might occur over the weekend. Uh, so we, we don't have that gap risk. As long as we ha are trading um, uh, instruments which are, have prices 24 hours during the normal working days, then we don't have a real gap risk for those symbols during the week. Um, but if you would trade at other brokers uh, or if you trade symbols which follow exactly the, the future of the DAX, for example, then you have yeah um, non, non trading hours between 10 and uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so eight, 10 o'clock in the evening and 8 o'clock in the morning. In order to avoid any gaps, any non trading hours, it's definitely a good idea to have that kind of time stop involved. Let's go at least one time here within a chart. And uh, let me open, for example, Australian dollar, uh, US dollar. Yeah, let's, let's go for that as an example. Uh, let me enlarge the picture. Let's go for H1, for example. And um, let me enlarge it once again. Now we can once again check our our uh, idea or our strategy. And let me go here in the middle of the chart as well and repeat a little bit of the logic of, of that kind of strategy. So we always measure the distance between close of a candle with respect to the EMA at the same time. And if that, that's the story, if it, that would exceed a certain level, then it's time to open the trade into the direction of our um, EMA. Let's assume we would reach that stop loss here with, with that candle. So we would open a trade exactly here. You saw that I moved to the next candle. So I wait until the end of that candle. I can make my decision. So trade opening would be actually the open of the next candle. So we would open the trade here at that level. That would be our open price for that um, mean reversion trade. And now let me explain within the chart the two ideas of where to set the take profit. 
So one idea is we go for the EMA value at the open of the trade. And that would be, oh, that's exactly uh, here where I open the sell trade. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I go here. So that would be the take profit level for that trade. Variant one. Variant two, it would be a moving take profit. It would be a moving take profit in the sense the take profit would be the red line. And whenever we cross the red line, we would close the trade. That's the other idea. But let's start with a simpler one. And that is the one that we have a take profit level already from the very beginning at a fixed level. You see what happens here. So we open the trade here. And a couple of hours uh, later, in this case, it would take for the next day. Um, here, we would hit our take profit level. Perfect. Um, second confirmation. So second chart was a confirmation of a good trade. But nevertheless, that's not a statistic. Um, it's uh, just a statistic one or two, um, but uh, that's not something we can take as a proof. But that's the basic idea of uh, those kind of trades. I hope you understand the logic and you can follow. And doing it that way, even with an unsharp definition of what distance level we should take in order to open those trades, you see, it doesn't look that bad. So if I would have opened the trade already here, okay, I would reach my take profit as well. Or you see, Exactly for those kind of conditions, if you don't have a move strongly in one direction, it's a perfect strategy. Um, so the strategy is even um, more profitable in what we call cyber markets and 70% of all time we are acting in sideward markets. So it's a good idea to have that strategy within your overall trading portfolio. So that's an overall logic. But up to now, we don't have any proof for any edge. We don't know. Only from a few examples within the chart, uh, doesn't look that bad. <laughs> but that's not how I um, introduce or develop trading strategies. So now it comes to that kind of proof or to answer the question, do we have an edge? And um, I want to, to show you how, from a more methodology point of view, how I do such kind of investigations in order to confirm uh, uh, that edge. So I will do an investigation. And uh, the real investigation, by the way, is done with uh, self-written C++ uh, code uh, and um, programs. And uh, if you are a little bit longer already um, with my webinars, you will realize, hey, Stefan mentioned C++. Yes, I have changed the language from C to C++. But anyhow, I uh, did that step. So the investigation I have done in order to, to prove that a kind of edge has been on M5 data. So with more than 15 years history, which is uh, more than 1 million candles per uh, pair. So, and I investigated uh, originally 29 Forex pairs. So everything you can create or combine out of those eight uh, currencies. And finally, the 29th uh, is gold, which for me personally acts like uh, another Forex pair, but anyhow. So the amount of data I have investigated has been quite huge. And even more, what I did first step, and you will later see why, I opened it with every M5, M5 candle such a trade into the direction of the EMA, even not asking what distance uh, do I exceed already any threshold. I will do that in a second step. Ask the, the question about the threshold, we will do in a second step. So first thing is, in order to prove the, the kind of edge, we, with every new open of a M5 candle, I open a new trade. And even not waiting until the trade before comes to an end. No, 
So it will be millions of trades. Uh, we will, in principle, investigate in order to uh, to prove that kind of edge. So trade, as introduced with the strategy itself, is closed by crossing the EMA. And EMA, I always mean the open, uh, the EMA value at the open of the trade. The other variant I have not investigated up to now. Still, I used that time stop at end of the day or end of the week uh, because I don't want to have that uh, long lasting trades. If we start exactly in that way, then we can now look what distances those distances from our EMA value are most profitable because we can look at from from that perspective and we even start just in order to investigate that edge we will even start by trades without costs meaning no spread no commission we will investigate that as well but that's more a principal kind of, of of approach when it only comes to the question of do we have an edge we can disregard costs and first prove that the next step then will be, is our edge good enough even to, to be better than having those costs of trade involved as well? But that's then the next step. Let me show you some uh, uh, results of that kind of investigations of millions of trades. And then you will learn how I can prove that kind of edge. You see now an Excel sheet and I just start only with two symbols in order to, to show you how those kind of results have been created. You remember, we know always at the open of the trade, the distance to the EMA. Okay, that means we can classify our trades. So I can ask for those in total 1 million trades I have executed. When I opened a given trade, is that distance within that interval between 0% away from, uh, so exactly on the EMA, or 0.01% away from that EMA? So we can ask, is our actual distance in that kind of interval? And if so, then that trade will fall in that distance uh, level. And what I can tell you, for all Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar trades, I have earned in total 725 euros with those trades, which fall into that distance interval. And on the other hand, with um, uh, gold, I would have lost uh, 750 euro. So that's the logic of that kind of um, table here. So between uh, 0.03 and 0.05% distance, we have earned 4,662 euros. And that's exactly what that blue line is showing you. So what does it tell you? Okay, we learn that we become most, or we get the most money with trades in the distance in the region of um, 0.07. That's the maximum here. That's, for example, one lesson we learn here. And we learned the other lesson that if you go for higher distances, okay, uh, maybe there will be less trades and the total profit is, yeah, is not that huge. The other thing you see already was the two examples, Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar, it works well. For gold, no, more or less, no. I took that example first with just only two symbols because, of course, I have investigated all the other ones as well. But you now see how the concept looks like. We always get that kind of bell-shaped uh, curve here. And there are underlyings which work better than others. Okay, let me simply accumulate all those trades because then I know the total profit uh, of everything. And that is what I show up here. Let's have a um, closer look to that kind of sequence. So what you can see is the best symbol at all for that kind of approach 
would be British pound, New Zealand dollar. Second, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. You realize those kind of instruments? Hmm. Although uh, already in other webinars, I called those um, underlines the more boring one. Let's move to completely other side. Here we have Euro, Japanese Yen, Gold, US Dollar, Japanese Yen, Canadian Dollar, Japanese Yen. You see Yens. Okay, we labeled already in former webinars those kind of instruments, the more trendy ones. But here we need mean reversion coming back. Ah, yeah. That doesn't sound like trend or trendy behavior. Okay, that gives us already a hint which symbols are good for that kind of strategy and which symbols are maybe not that good. So that's one thing we have done. So it looks already not that bad for our strategy. And now it comes the next question. So in principle, it might work, but what about the costs? Let's already foresee a little bit what will happen. So you see most of the profits here will be generated with very small distances to the EMA. So that means those trades don't have huge profits because they, they, um, the individual trade is just a small trade. Ooh, and then you we realize that we go more for the minor pairs. Not typically those have higher spreads, so higher costs. Oh, that might be critical for us that we, even having an edge, that we, after costs, will still have an edge. So, of course, it's really important for this kind of approach that we will look into the costs as well. So let's go for that. So involving the costs is quite easy. Um, we have all the information we need for that. And um, therefore, we just have to recalculate all the trades, including all the costs. Let's do it. So then let's go with cost. Once again, in this case, I have three examples. The principle of how to present the data is absolutely the same. I once again go for the distance intervals uh, here, like, uh, let me move the chart a little bit away, um, or even further. So we go for those distance intervals from 0 to 0 0.01, uh, from 0 0.01 to 0 0.02, and then we can see where we earn money. And of course, you see in costs included, the very small distances now generate huge losses. Simple reason, because our gross profit is less than uh, the costs of trading, because with that we don't have um, long distance trades, so to say, and therefore they are in principle profitable, but after cost, not anymore. Therefore, everything goes extremely to the south for very small distances. For gold, now it's tot completely lost, so gold will not be a symbol for that kind of strategy. But I see already two examples, mm -hmm. and they work. That's good. Um, so you can already think about how to generate a strategy out of that. Definitely, we need a minimum distance in order to open any trade. To open a trade with very small distances from our EMA will not give us profits. But what about if we start, for example, here for the red run, uh, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, if we start at point two distance, uh, then we get everything above here. Or maybe we can go even starting here at point one, because then everything uh, which is uh, above that level would be profitable trades. Hey, that's cool. So we just need that kind of threshold. And we can easily define that threshold here. 
So let's go exactly from the other side. So let's ask, okay, if we only go for trades above, for example, 1.8, then we would earn everything which is here above that would be still close to zero, and so on and so forth. And that's what I have done. And then you get those lines. So I accumulate all trades above 1%, 0.8% and then you would earn this one. 0.6 then you would earn this one. 0.4 then you would earn this one. 0.2 this. And now you see, okay, starting at 0.1 will only generate me profits. And I will go for everything from there onwards. And even we might think here we don't have that kind of example that we don't trade anymore if we exceed a certain level. Okay, but definitely we need that minimum distance level in order to have profitable trades uh, finally. Doing so generates not the best, not quite um, bad curves. Uh, do I have everything here? There we are. Now, here we have still all the symbols um, in, and you see, okay, uh, there are a lot of curves above zero line which means we get profits and even although it's just a, a brief view on that that is everything still we close all the trades before end of the day or at 11 p.m or one second before that we can get a little bit more out of the kind of strategy let me show you that example as well if we wait at least until the end of the week. So in total, we would earn even more money here. And you see more lines um, above zero uh, within that one here. I know we cannot identify everything uh, directly, but it should illustrate that we can realize out of those bell-shaped curves that we just need a minimum threshold uh, which should be exceeded for a given symbol, and then we can generate uh, profits out of that basic idea. Okay, that sounds like a confirmation of an edge. And even after costs, we still can realize that we have such an edge. But now, remember what I have done? I have traded every M5 candle. Okay, now we have learned we we, we, we need as minimum distance from that EMA you know, in order to open the trade. Okay, but would you still open those trades um, one after the other? So that's what I have done in, in that kind of investigation. So I don't have single trades. No, I have lots of trades. Uh, let me go back here to that chart. Think about my threshold for for the distance level would be in the order of, let's say, five, um, um, five grids here. Then I would have opened the first trade at the end of that candle. Then I would have opened another trade here, another trade here, another trade here, and so on. And maybe later here, the distance is not any more exceeding my threshold here. I would not have opened an, an additional trade in that kind of simulation I have done. Think about practical trading. Okay, we would open a trade and then wait. We would simply wait for that trade to come to an end. Either stop loss or we cross our uh, EMA or we reach our time stop. So it would be more a single trade strategy and not a uh, trade bundle uh, opening one trade after the other if we still exceed our threshold. Um, nobody would do that, at least not manually. Um, with an expert advisor, of course, we can do, but still each new trade would, would give additional risk to our overall account. Therefore, mm, let's rethink about that. If it comes to the real strategy, we want to have one trade after the other and not uh, millions. Uh, of, of trades. Okay, we can go do that kind of investigation as well, no problem. So what we will do as a next step is from that edge to the strategy. Now 
as I introduced already, we will not trade any more all M5 candles, uh, even exceeding that threshold. So if you have an open trade, we will, we will, we will wait until that trade um, is closed. Okay. But now we get less trades, the number of trades will go down, of course. But now what we can do in the next step is we can really look for those lower and upper limits for our threshold in order to achieve the most profitable trading strategies with that single trade approach. And if it still will work, okay, maybe not for every symbol, as we learned already, there are symbols which are more suitable for that strategy than others. Um, perfect. We don't have to trade every symbol or any symbol. Um, let's do a selection for that strategy. Um, why not? Still, in the following, I will close all trades at uh, before weekend uh, as being the time stop. And now I will investigate additionally even some some indices like um, um, DAX and S&P 500. So those have been included as well. I will directly jump to the final result so that you have an idea what does it mean to have um, that kind of approach. And uh, let me even enlarge it uh, one step more. I, I will explain you first just one single line and then you will understand what's all about within that Excel sheet. Let's go for the first uh, line. So obviously it's uh, the symbol Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. And I have investigated uh, the EMA 10. And you see already later, I went through the universe of EMAs, uh, but very rough uh, with um, steps like from 10 to 20 to 50 to 100, even uh, further down here up to 5,000 in my M M5 chart. So I have investigated a couple of different EMA periods. And then I looked for the best strategy within some threshold limits, minimum and maximum value. Sometimes those are even close to each other. Sometimes we have values like uh, here, for example, that we would trade from 1% up to 2%. And all those trades we would take. Um, you see the number of trades being executed during the last uh, about uh, 15 years. And then the other numbers, like always when it comes to trading strategies, I have uh, some key figures and we don't have to go into those details. But one detail I want to mention. You, you can imagine that later we will combine those equities um, for different symbols to one single equity for portfolio. There's always a question of, Okay, we can trade every strategy the same way. For example, with 0.01 lot. But whatever we do, we trade 0.01 lot. Okay, that's one thing. Um, but maybe we can later scale some the sub strategies, the one more than the other. And then one possibility for that scaling process is to look for the same total euro maximum drawdown for a single. Uh, strategy. And therefore, I have something like a scale factor. Uh, in principle, that factor should be an integer number, but uh, I forgot to 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 uh, scale it down to an integer. But anyhow, it doesn't make a huge uh, difference. So, what do we learn from such a big table? Of course, we have I have done that investigation for um, more than 30 symbols and uh, for in total uh, nine different EMA values. And you definitely will see, let's go for the final number here, Opti. Opti is a special key figure I use for trading strategies. For the moment, the only thing you have to know is uh, the smaller the better. Not the higher the better, the smaller the better. So the best Australian dollar Canadian st uh, strategy would be this one. EMA 1000. Okay, then we would have the best uh, results uh, for that given uh, symbol. You can see already there are other symbols like Australian dollar, Swiss franc, not that good. Um, only a few EMAs would work. And uh, But on the other hand, if we go here, for example, there we have a special underlying as well, um, Euro 
um, Hungarian forint, um, which works very well for that strategy. Same is true for Euro, Polish, Slotty. And we will see others, British pound, Canadian dollar uh, is working and very well, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, as we foresee already out of our edge investigation. Even DAX, DAX in this case has a symbol uh, GRX uh, uh, Euro. Uh, the, the reason for that specific symbol is uh, the data source for those uh, M5 uh, DAX data. Yeah, now the next step is quite easy. Uh, I simply select all the good ones uh, for a given symbol and um, then I can create my portfolio. And that's exactly what I have done. And I can show you the result for that. Uh, before we look through the equity, I know that's always a, the most uh, interesting part. But um, here we are. Here we have the complete list of symbols which are most suitable for that kind of strategy. And uh, you see, for example, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar should be traded with an EMA of 2000 and a minimum maximum value for the threshold. So the distance from that EMA to open a trade uh, would be between 1.2 and 1.6%. That would trigger a trade. And if you have an open trade, we will not open another trade, but we will wait for the end of the trade, and that's always. That's the only thing we uh, we will do. The good thing is, okay, you you, you can trade such a strategy um, by an expert advisor. That's the one thing. But you can use that kind of table here already just as a filter for good instruments if you will do it, those kind of trades discretionary. So look for those instruments. They work best with that kind of strategy. So, um, and therefore, as I mentioned, if you want to have all those Excel sheets, no problem, I will send you. Uh, send me an email first, because otherwise I will not know uh, to whom I have to send that. In overall, combining all those trades, that's a huge list of trades. Let me see how many trades have been executed over the last 15 years. That's 12,000 12, trades for those uh, symbols in total. Yeah. Not that bad with the equity and 70,000 euros um, within that time frame. Mm, that's good. So that's a strategy without a stop loss. Whoops, no stop loss, as I mentioned. But if you look for the, the most unprofitable trade within that um, table here, it's uh, a couple of hundred euros. Okay, compared to 70,000 earnings, hmm, we can accept that. So even without a stop loss, it's not that bad. But we can introduce a stop loss as well, just as a percentage value. Then the story repeats. So I can show you the results uh, for with stop loss as well. We get a new table here, but the logic is absolutely the same. Um, you see different EMA values, and then besides that we have minimum and maximum value for our distance thresholds, um, we have stop loss in percent here as well. Yeah, and that's all. So that's stop loss is set, and then um, we have an, a third condition how to end trade. Waiting for weekend. That's one thing. Crossing the EMA, the other one, which would mean we reach our take profit. Or third thing, we reach the stop loss. Okay, we can do that. And then we get a new list of, of um, best uh, strategies. With the stop loss, we can get some more symbols, which can be traded with that kind of approach. So that kind of table here is, uh, so to say, um, yeah, more lines are filled with uh, good numbers. And that actually we can see in a combined equity here as well. And first go, uh, let me go for the list of symbols we can trade now. And you see, okay, that list is uh, a little bit longer now. So we have more instruments uh, which can be traded. And the combined equity of 
all those sub strategies is shown here. So it's a little bit more stable, so the drawdown is less uh, if you would go for that mathematically. Um, so that is something we get out of the stop loss. What you see here is, of course, mathematically driven. It's optimization, combination, but it's also a good example for how to create trading strategies, the methodology behind. You have an idea which should create an edge. First, we proved that edge. And then we thought about what if we introduce costs as well. And then we see we can create a setup and realize, hey, we need such a threshold value um, to open trades, yes or no. And that's the way how you can derive and develop trading strategies. I hope at least you got my point here, um, how to do those steps. Uh, maybe you cannot redo everything by your own in the same detail uh, with self-written programs, but I think you could catch up the clue of that. So overall, in a nutshell, mean reversion is really quite smart base or basic strategy. You can use that kind of a idea even with your discretionary trading looking for huge deviations and if you have those deviations you trade back to where well, yeah to that fair value and we just call it fair value and we don't have really a clue what is a fair value of a given underlying at a given time but in this case we just use an ema and it turned out why not so it works so um, yeah that's that's good enough for us. So using that kind of idea for discretionary trading is uh, good as well. But what you have learned hopefully during the webinar is also the kind of methodology I use here. So I first try to, to prove that edge because if I would not do that step first, okay, I might get a trading strategy, but I don't have a clue why it works. Um, so with proving that edge, we learn a little bit more why. And we learn how to improve. In this case, what we learned and what was essential is to have those kind of threshold levels uh, for a given underlying. Finally, what we have done here is we have set up a complete portfolio and you can have access to uh, the detailed parameters uh, if you like, and I would I will send you those Excel sheets uh, with all those numbers. That's for today. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. And uh, yeah, at least in Germany, we have two days off, um, Black Friday tomorrow, and uh, on Monday, we have uh, Easter Monday. I know in Bulgaria, it, everything is right the same but just one week shifted. Um, so happy Easter already now, at least for those uh, uh, living in countries like Germany, it will be this weekend. And uh, for, for other people, uh, for example, in Bulgaria, it will be just one week later. I can already announce next webinar uh, in May will once again be about stock trading with a quite simple strategy once again. It's easy to use and uh, yeah, it will be not that mathematically driven like today. So it will be hmm, a little bit easier, but anyhow, whatever you like. I like both easy ideas and uh, mathematics behind. Um, I go for both and yeah, now I think have a good weekend and enjoy the day. Bye-bye.